Hey guys, uh, welcome to another edition of Danny's Hot Takes. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Ultramarines Codex Supplement. I'm so excited. Yeah, I know, Dave. You can stop saying that anytime. I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to have to skip past the fluff for our review here. Yeah, uh, as, as with all of our, our previous reviews of these books, um, we just do not have time to go into the lore. They, they have packed so much lore into them, and if we did, it'd be like a three-hour video. Oh, my God. Nobody wants to watch that. I mean, I do. I mean, some people do, yeah. but uh, not the majority of our listeners per our, uh, uh, per our communiques. Right. So, uh, first of all, the first thing that they do in these codex supplements before they get to the data sheets is list out the point values, which I thought was interesting because that's kind of the reverse of the way it normally is yeah. in the codex, right? But, well, there's so limited amount of stuff. And no weapons, no no war yep, gear. Yeah, because they include all the war gear for these guys already yep. in their points cost. So, uh, which is which is good. Um, so, a couple of things that you'll notice: uh, Marnius still two hundred, uh, Gulliman down a little bit, down to three fifty. Down to three fifty. Interesting, uh, and that might be because Gulliman is a little bit less good. But we can talk about that when we I mean, get to his profile. He's he's fifty points less good, and I'm okay with that. He's yeah. He's more than 50 points less good, in my opinion. But I'm also okay with that because he would be totally... If he were the same as he was before... He got a little bit better warding-wise, but he also got... We, we'll get to that. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, I think Sicarius went down a little bit. Cassius went down a little bit. And then they, they removed options like the Chapter Ancient and the Chapter Champion from the normal Space Marine book and made them Ultramarines models only because they, that's the only way that the models currently exist. Right. Um, which is fine. Also Honor Guard, and uh, they also added Tyrannic War Vets. Yeah. Yeah. And the Victress Honor Guard also that, went down a couple points, too. That's actually a model too. they still make, so I'm not the surprised. The War Vets? The Tyrannic War Vets? Yeah. yeah and so man, they are solid in this book. They are solid. Yeah. All right. So, so let's talk about Bobby G. So Dave. let's talk about Bobby G, Dave. Um, right. Other than the... Other than the points going down, yep. the only changes are the wording to his aura bubble. It's still six inches... He now re-rolls all hits. All to hit rolls. You can re-roll any to hit roll. You've got your uh, executor shooting up against uh, some flyers, and normally you got the minus one to shoot, uh, which means that on threes you don't get to re-roll. Uh, now you do. Well, fear no more, yep. because you absolutely can re-roll that, that, that three that you rolled to hit. However, the downside to this is he only lets you re-roll ones to wound. Now, this I think is a really good change for him. I think that's a good change for anybody. I, yeah. I don't think necessarily that anybody should allow full rerolls to wound. And that's coming from somebody who literally has played in three tournaments using Bobby G with full rerolls to wound. I think having... Uh, the most you should have is a one to reroll ones. And I think I think that that stretched across every army. That would be just fine with me. Okay. I mean... I can see some rerolling all to wound rolls, but it would have to be some very specific circumstances. Right. Like, uh, like, like a quite, stratagem or something sure. that you use. Sure. Or I quite like the Doom Psychic Power for Eldar. And it is one of the best Psychic Powers in the game, but getting to reroll failed to wound rolls for Craft World units on that target unit, so it's only against one unit. It's right. not against anything Everything. that you shoot at, right? Yeah. So that's fine. I just... I like it because it kind of lends that little feel that, you know, you could... Uh, yes, you hit them... But you didn't wound him because it glanced off an armor plate, or it, it adds a little bit of thematic fluff, to, in my opinion. Sure. You know. Now, with Gulliman not being able to reroll all to wound rolls, um, did the Emperor's, did the Hand of Dominion, was that a minus one to hit before? Uh, the weapon? Yeah. Because uh, it, 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 it no longer or? is in melee. In melee? Yeah, the one that strength times two minus three. Um. It was a minus before, yeah. Yeah, no, three. it's now. No, now it's not minus one to hit. Was it minus one to hit before? I thought. Oh it was. no, 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 it wasn't. Oh okay, all right. Yeah, no, I think wasn't. that not being able to reroll all to wound rolls makes the emperor's sword less good, and the and the hand of dominion maybe that will come up a little bit more often as something well, that you'll and use. And Danny, the hand of dominion is up to flat four from three. Oh, was it flat three before? Yes. Oh yeah, then totally. I would use that a lot more often then. Yeah, that's really solid. And Emperor's Sword, of course, still on six is to wound, does D3 mortal wounds in addition, which is very, very powerful, of course. Yep. Um, but you're not going to be able to fish for those sixes quite as well uh, when right. you're going when you're up against like a toughness eight target or something. Yeah. So. so yeah. Plus, 
He also has the Angels of Death rule, which means that he benefits from the tactical from the tactical doctrines, yep. uh, which is really great. Um, so that can give him additional AP on on his shooting weapon, yeah, um, or his melee weapons. Also good. Also solid. And he gets a bonus attack on the first round of combat. So he's up to seven attacks instead of six. Not bad. I give it my Dave's two thumbs up. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we got Marnius Calgar. Marius Calgar literally has not changed other than adding the Angels of Death uh, role. He is exactly the he same. He is also only Marnius Calgar in the armor, which means that you can't take Marnius Calgar on primary. Fire. Yeah, correct. Which you I are like. 100% right. I like. So, uh, uh, then, of course, the Victor is on a guard. Yep. Uh, they have maintained uh, the same thing there. No, no change. Nope. Uh, Chief Librarian Tigerius is is the brand new data sheet. Oh, wait. I think Sorry. Sonny has actually got another attack. Oh, no. He got an extra wound, dude. And he's up to wound to eight. I think he was six before. Well, Maybe so, he wasn't. So far, everything else that's been in, in Gravis that we've noticed has gotten an extra wound and an extra attack. No, not an extra attack. Uh, only the aggressors because they have two power fists, I think. Maybe. But he does he have, two power, have two power fists. Yeah, I'll, we'll have to double check that. I'll double check that. Yeah, but but to, uh, eight wounds is uh, pretty good. Yep. So he makes a fitting uh, to counterpoint to Abaddon for sure. Oh, yeah, very much. And he also changed the wording. I guess we're saying he didn't change it all, right? <laughs> he also did get the chapter master all. rule uh, where he rerolls to hit rolls instead of fail to hit rolls. Right. Which is a nice bonus. And does he also do... Uh, so he's... So basically, if you don't need Gulliman in your army, Marnius Calgar now fits a niche because yeah. he does the exact I mean, same thing hit rolls wise that right. Bobby did. Except you don't get to reroll the ones to wound. Well, but you you but can just take a lieutenant, a lieutenant for seventy four points. Right. And there you're or set. cheaper if you take a power armored one instead of a Primaris one. I don't know why you do that. Primaris is the way of the future, game. <laughs> we're living in the past, son. Come on out of the closet. All right. What? <laughs> All right, um, so let's move on to Tigerius. Uh, I do like the Rod of Tigerius is now minus three AP. Yep. I thought that was really solid. Oh, I agree. Um, he has the, the still the Hood of high fi Hellfire and the Master of Prescience, both of which have been improved. Very solid. Um, they did preview those. He's still pretty good. And he can manifest two and deny two. Uh, and he knows three psychic powers from either uh, the Space Marines discipline, uh, the Librarius Discipline, or three from the Indominus Discipline, which is the new one in this, this book. This is the new one, yeah. Which is all about uh, mental fortitude. Uh, we have Chaplain Cassius. Um, Chaplain Cassius uh, is... Uh, he gets guys that can... Uh, basically, if, a, if an enemy... If one of your friendly units dies, you roll a d6, and on a six, they do one mortal wound to the enemy unit that killed them. Yeah. Uh, which I thought was cool. Um, it's neat. Yeah. Otherwise, he has a Combi Flamer and a Crozius, which is the same as normal chaplains. And he's got Litanies of Hate. Uh, and he knows two Litanies, which is pretty good. Yeah. Because that, that is a big difference from a normal chaplain. Yeah, normal chaplains only know the one. Um, very so, good. Man, now that I'm thinking about that, that would be a great rule for interrogator chaplains from Dark Angels. That would be a really fun nope. uh, ability for them to have. Nope. Pass. I was thinking about my boys in green, Dave. Uh-huh. Well, this is the boys in blue, so get your mind in the, out of the gutter. I won't. <laughs> uh, right. So Captain Sicarius. Yep. Um, um, I don't think there's any change there, although I nope. wish they hadn't called him Captain Sicarius and just renamed him and played with the meme. Cato. I, Cato Sicarius. Right. Was, his, was it just his name. And the Battle Forge Heroes rule, I think, is a little different. He allows him to just pick a unit within six and give it Defenders of Humanity. Uh, which is cool because you can make yeah. whatever unit you want obsec, so terminators or whatever else. Oh yeah, kind of cool. Uh, Tilion uh, is pretty much exactly the same. Yep. 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 Still good. However, Still cheap. Moving on to the next one here. Now, Kronos is cool. I like Kronos's new 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 shtick here. Yep. Um, so we can ride any normal Space Marine vehicle, not in like a Primaris vehicle, right? Um, but he always makes the vehicle hit on weapon skill 2 up, no matter how far it gets degraded. Um, yeah. So whatever it... And then if it dies, he can pop out. I mean, I would love to slap him in, in an executioner, but... Yeah, sure. They so would everybody else. They won't let me. Except for the people playing against you. They would not like yeah, that. Yeah, they're like, no thanks. No thanks. Suck it, Dave. All right. Um, so we have the chapter Ancient, um, which is... Yep. Uh, same thing. 
Yep. More or less. And that's a four. Um, yep, four up, get back up and shoot. And he's got a power sword, which is nice over the normal chapter, yep. or uh, over company a, ancient. Over just a bolt. Chapter one. champion has a mastercrafted power sword uh, and a champion's blade. Uh, where he gets an extra, he gets an extra attack. He's yep. got pretty much exactly the same rules. He's pretty cool though. Uh, nice little character killer that sets up as an elite slot, and uh, he's good at fighting other uh, any other characters. Yeah, pretty basic. Uh, honor guard, uh, our bodyguards um, with, and they still have the yeah they have artificer armor, so they're two up safe. Two up safe, which is nice. And they now operate like a shield drones, right? Yeah, yeah, more or less. Yep. No, no. Just like she, I want to. Let's just make them just shield drones. We'll call it that. We'll call it good. Right. Just auto slough off all the wounds to one for a mortal wound. I don't know if that's. Yep. Possible. No, it is exactly like shield drones. You are right. That's even better than it was before. Yep. That's really good. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Uh, Tyrannic <laughs> war vets. Let's talk about them. We'll move on. Yeah. So Tyrannic war vets are exactly the same as stern guard. Um, and they actually even have the Stern Guard keyword. Right. So if you want to play Ultramarines and you're going to take Stern Guard, might as well take Tyrannic War Vets instead. There are two more points. And better. Yep. Because they get to reroll all to hit and twin rolls against Tyranid models. Yep. And they have the same gun. I mean, arguably, it's very situational. You're not going to see a lot of Tyranid. I guess they don't have the same weapon options, but I would, if I'm going to take Stern Guard, I'm taking them for the special ammunition bolters anyway, so. Yeah. But again, it's very, you know, if you have a buddy in your local meta that plays tons of Tyranids, then by far, in a way, take Oh, them, yeah. Because you know. they'll, they'll tear them up. And those are the units that are involved in the Ultramarines uh, yep. Codex Supplement. All right, so that's the end of this. I guess we don't need to show anything yep. else? Yep, nope, we're done. Uh, you get your ass to the strategy page <laughs> right now. Because I won't. Oh, there's one in there that has me so excited. Oh, there are oh. several in here that make me not. Uh, so we've got Science of Gullman. Um, and this is the rule they previewed that right. gives them the ability to not count as moving when Tactical Doctor is up, which is really cool. Yep. And Ultramarines, more than any other chapter that we've seen so far, so make that a grand total of two, have, a, have many abilities to, and I imagine they'll probably be the most, they have many abilities to manipulate what Doctrine is going on. Which makes sense. Because which totally the, makes sense. That's the, their thing. He wrote the Codex of Stardays, so. Right. And rewrote it recently after he took over, so. Because he's like, oh, I need to make some edits, some small edits here. Um... So, uh, they've got six Warlord traits. They've got some real good ones. They also have a bunch of set ones. Yeah, because you have all of these characters who, if they become your Warlord, have to take that. Correct. Um, so you have Adept of the Codex, which is the same as it was before. So that's a five up on every stratagem, get a command point. Right. Uh, you have Master of Strategy. So once per game, you can pick, or once per turn, you can pick a unit within six and count them as being in Tactical Doctrine, regardless of what other Doctrine is being, is being used. Yep. Which is great. Uh, you've got Calm Under Fire. I was upside down reading it, and I see Clam Under Fire, and I think that's a, I think that's a better <laughs> Dave, I don't know if we can talk about that on here. Uh. Uh, <laughs> uh, when resolving an attack made by a ranged weapon by a friendly Ultramarines unit within six inches of Warlord. Uh, oh, uh, if you fall back, you can not suffer the minus one to hit, like Ultramarines normally do. Nice. Uh, you've got Paragon of War. Anytime you roll a wound roll of six, you inflict one mortal wound in addition. Not bad. That's pretty solid. Um, you've got uh, a Nobility Made Manifest, which basically gives all of your infantry and biker units within six inches of the character heroic intervention. Note, this is now what Bobby G's uh, rel, uh, yep. set Warlord trait is. Um, and then you finally have uh, Warden of McCrag, uh, which... Which is Marnius Calgars. Right. You can perform heroic intervention within six inches instead of three, and you can move six inches. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty good. Yeah. I like them both. Yeah, I think they're good. both are solid. So what's on the next page, Danny? All right, let's talk about relics. Oh. Yeah, you thought it was stratagems, didn't you? I, well, I did. Yeah, you were really excited. I, I was. <laughs> so we've got the Soldier's Blade. This is a cool relic. Um, you can use it to replace a power sword, Mastercraft, a power sword, or combat knife. And the reason it's cool that you can replace a combat knife is you can give this to a Phobos captain yep. to give him a little bit of melee. Um, so it's a plus one strength, minus four AP, two damage weapon. Not bad. Not bad, no. Considering your options with the Phobos captain is literally oh, yeah. punch fists. So, but yeah, Sure, punch fists, right. Well, his, his combat blade, right? That gives him so, plus one attack. I mean, it, that's just it, though. It just, it's still, still strength of user, no minus yes, that's true. one damage. I mean, it's... You got the Santa Halo, which gives the model a three up invulnerable save and lets them deny a psychic power. Yep. Not bad. Not bad. Standard of McCrag and in, uh, Involite. So, uh, so an ancient model. Yep. Right? 
Add one to the attack characteristics of models and friendly ultramarine units while this unit is within six inches of a model with this relic. Friendly ultramarine units automatically pass morale test within 12 inches. Yep. That's pretty good. So you can combo this up pretty good to get five attack intercessors. That's not bad. Yep. That's pretty good. Uh, with the, of course, with the veteran intercessors uh, stratagem. Yes. And then also using this and shock assault to give them an extra yep. attack as well. Uh, you got the armor of Connor, which is a Terminator model only. Uh, a model with this relic has a four up invul save. And when resolving an attack against this model, have the damage. Yeah. Very good. Pretty solid. Yep. Helm of Censure. Uh, when re so this lets you reroll to hit until a wound rolls of one for that model. In addition, if you attack a hair, uh, if you heretic Astartes, no, just Adeptus Astartes or Heretic Astartes. So it's either one. Uh, you add one to the hit roll and one to the wound roll. Not bad. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Probably going to be taking that a lot as with this current new meta shift to uh, Astartes. Everybody's pulling, dusting out the. Uh, I can see that. Yeah. Dusting, dusting off all of their armies and pulling them out of the closet. <laughs> yeah. All right, you've got uh, Vengeance uh, for Ultramar, or Vengeance of Ultramar, sorry. I thought this one was actually really freaking good. It's a oh. Storm Bolter, yeah, right? Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. It's a Storm Bolter that's Rapid Fire 4. Awesome. So eight shots. Strength 4, AP 0, minus uh, no, 1 damage. So no extra thing, except... If you shoot at anything that's not a vehicle, you also get to reroll fatal to wound rolls. Yep. Man, what an awesome relic. Just, I can imagine a captain with that, like, literally taking down five or six guardsmen every single turn. Like, oh, yeah. just with a storm bolter. Awesome. Uh, and then you have the uh, uh, Terentian Cloak. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Dave, I know you really I, like this one. I really like this one. Uh, until you told me something, and it made me just like it even more. Okay. Uh, like, super high. Uh, because you said you could give it to a Chaplain Dreadnought. Sure. So this one is a... It's basically a camo cloak that heals you. Yep. It's Well, it's a 5-up invulnerable save. Yep. And you get to get... At the start of your movement phase, you regain D3 wounds. It's automatic. At the start of your movement phase, regain D3 wounds. Yep. That's nuts to me. That's pretty good. That's just... It's like... Oh, I'm just gonna. Heal I actually it also free. like this on like a captain in Gravis armor who has a lot of wounds already, like seven wounds or whatever. That's literally that's what I said. I, I liked it on originally, and you said, "Well, what about a chaplain dreadnought?" I was like, "Well, screw the Gravis guy. I would, <laughs> screw that the, Gravis jerk. Give it to the chaplain. Just beat people up all day." So as we talked about in the White Scars review, there's also some special issue work here as well. So we have four common items. We have the adamantine mantle, the artificer armor, master crafted weapon, and digital weapons. Uh, the Adamantine Mantle, mantle is a 5-up Field of Pain. Artificer Armor is a 2-up Armor Save, 5-up Invul Save. Mastercrafted Weapon is Pick a Weapon, Add 1 to its Damage. And Digital Weapons is uh, an extra attack that if it hits, it does a Mortal Wound. Yep. So those are all pretty standard and generic. Um, so if you play, and let's talk about successors for a minute, because we yep. did not talk about that before. So... And Ultramarines have a lot of successors, I, so this is going to be important to some people. And if you haven't, uh, watched the White Scars, um... Uh, then if you take a successor, you can't take one of the relics of McCrag. Right. So these relics here on this black page are only for Ultramarines, uh, Ultramarines only. Successor chapters can take one of the special issue war gear, war gear relics instead. Uh, otherwise, you pretty much get all the same stuff. So you get the same warlord traits, same stratagem, same psychic powers, same tactical objectives. Those are all the same regardless of whether you're a successor chapter or the parent chapter. Right. Um, however, if you are a successor chapter, you can spend one CP to pick a, 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 a relic from the Relics of McCrag. But you're just borrowing it, because you're going to have to return it. Probably. So they gave it to you because you're cool or whatever. Who knows? All right. Um, so in addition to that, they have some Ultramarines-only special issue war gear. Um, so you have the Reliquary of Vengeance. Uh, or Reliquary of Vengeance, sorry. Yep. Once per battle at the start of the fight phase, the model with this relic can reveal the Reliquary. When it does so, until the end of that phase, add one to the attack characteristics of models within, with uh, a friendly chapter units while they are within six inches of that model. So here's our six attack intercessors. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, cool. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, totally. Once per game, that's fine. All right, you got this. That's all you're going to need, Danny, with six attacks, just once per game. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, you take that with the space with the Codex Space Marines ones that lets you uh, every time you roll a six to hit, you do an automatic wound, just bury people in attacks. Oh god! 
All right, you've got the Sealed Oath. At the start of the battle, before the first turn begins, select one enemy unit. You can reroll to hit rolls and to wound rolls uh, for attacks made by models and friendly chapter units against that enemy unit. Whilst that friendly unit is within six inches of a model with this relic. So basically, you pick a target. Any friendly units within six inches of you get to re-roll to hit and to rolls against them. Pretty darn good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You've got Hell Fury Bolts. Um, and so this basically lets you pick a bolt weapon. Instead of shooting its normal ammo, you can shoot the Hell, Fer the Hell Fury Bolts. Uh, and if you hit, you do one mortal wound. Nice. That's actually pretty good. And then you've got the Sunwrath Pistol. The Sunwrath pistol. pistol, which is uh, which is a plasma pistol uh, that o is always overcharged and fires twice. Yep. It's pretty good. I like it. It's kind of cool. Yeah. So you've got some cool options in here. Yeah, you do. Uh, I'm torn between the Vengeance of Ultramar and the the cloak. I just, I don't know. I like that seal. But we both. should go to this page. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, Dave. I know you're excited. So excited. All right. So you've got Martial Precision. Um, use the stratagem of when resolving, sorry, before resolving an attack made by an Ultramarine's model in your army in the shooting phase, just auto hits. Yep. One CP. Oh, I need this last cannon to kill this guy. Uh, I'm going to auto hit you. So does that say only usable on infantry? <clears throat> nope. Okay. It could be anything. And is it's per shot, or is it, can I use it on, on attack. execution? It's one shot. So, okay. Got it. So one shot from your super last cannon. Just auto hits, auto wound. Laser destroyer, or whatever Thump. it is. Auto hits, doesn't auto wound. I mean, let's be honest, it's gonna auto wound. Yeah, okay. Wait till you roll that one, buddy. <laughs> That's why Bobby's standing next to him. Or a lieutenant. Alright, so uh, Vengeance for Kalf is an anti-word bearer stratagem. It's very situational. Sure. I like it fluff-wise. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It lets you reroll to hit and to wound rolls against word bearer units. Yeah. For one phase. Yep. Uh, in the fight phase, specifically. Inspiring Command. Uh, use a stratagem at the start of the shooting phase or the fight phase. Select one Ultramarine's chapter master, captain, or lieutenant from your army until the end of the phase. The range of that model's aura abilities is increased by three inches. Yep. That's pretty cool. Let's you, in case you misplay something, misplay like an aura or something like that, you can boost it. So I'm or if you really need to boost to get to two units. Basically, I'm, I'm basically doing it every turn then. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. You've got Cycle of War for one CP. Um... You use this strategy at the start of a battle round. If an Ultramarine's Warlord from your army is on the battlefield and the Assault Doctrine is active, go back to Devastator Doctrine. Yep. That's you really could cool. Start, you could start it over. Which is really nice. It really is, especially for those six-round games. Yep. I mean, I'm planning on having my opponent tabled by round three, so I'll just be in the Assault phase. So that'll be fine. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> then you've got Rapid Redeployment. Now, this stratagem is probably... Uh, Probably a, the best stratagem in here, maybe. No, I don't know. It's pretty close. It's good. It's very good. Being able to redeploy three up to three it's units. auto three units. So other other uh, armies that have this type of ability have to pay for is, each one, right? Was D three units yeah. instead of instead of three flat. I guess orcs also have three flat. Um, yeah, three ultramarine units, and you re and you redeploy them after you figure out who has the first turn and who seizes the initiative. Yep. So you can really mess with your opponent's deployment this way. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's very good. Very powerful. Yep. Very powerful. And that's 2 CP, right? 2 CP. It's worth every one. I would pretty much use that every single game, I think. I'm probably uh, going it to. It depends on how many CP I had. All right, so you've got Sons of Gulliman. Use this stratagem when an Ultramarine's infantry or biker unit from your army is chosen to shoot uh, or fight. Uh, if that unit has the troops battlefield roll until the end of the phase... Oh, re-roll... Uh, you can re-roll to hit rolls. Yep. Uh, otherwise, you can re-roll once to hit. Okay. So this is the same as the uh, their one that's currently in Codex Space Marines. So. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, Avenge the Fallen. Use the stratagem when an Ultramarine's unit from your army is destroyed as a, result, as a result of attack from an enemy unit. Until the end of the battle, when resolving an attack made by an Ultramarine's model from your army against that enemy unit, re-roll to hit rolls of one. So... This is like the FU stratagem. It's, it's like, vengeance. I told you, jerks. I'm going to get you now. Yeah. Um, you killed Johnny. Courage and Honor. Uh, this is 1 CP. Use at, at the start of the morale phase. Add 1 to the morale of all of your Ultramarines units for that phase. Pretty, yeah. pretty awesome. All right. Um, so Tactical Expertise. This one they previewed on yeah. Warhammer Community, so I won't be going over that. Uh, fall back and re-engage. Use the stratagem when an Ultramarines unit from your army falls back. 
Uh, this stratagem is one CP if the unit has the Codex Discipline Chapter Tactic, otherwise it costs two CP. That unit can shoot and charge this turn. That unit, if the unit has the Codex Discipline Chapter Tactic, which is the uh, 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 which is the Ultramarines Chapter Tactic, yep. uh, the hit roll penalty from that from the tactic for falling back and shooting does not apply to that unit. This nope. Turn. Pretty cool. Hey, what's that next one, Danny? <sighs> Defensive focus. Defensive focus, Danny. What's it do? What's it do? All right. Use a stratagem after an Ultramarines unit from your army is chosen as the target of a charge. Select up to three other friendly Ultramarine units uh, that are more than one inch away from the enemy units and within six inches of the target unit. Uh, they can all fire Overwatch as the target unit as they were charges of, targets of the charge. Ugh. <laughs> Those could be like all the repulsors that you have, right, Dave? Yes, probably. Yeah. Oh, God. That's going to be I'm only going to charge one so I don't have to face or all of them. Yeah. Right, and it doesn't even Just matter. Go ahead and At least I'll make them. you spend two CP to do I it, I will guess. always have two CP for that. Yep. All right, so exemplar of the chapter. Uh, use a stratagem after nominating an Ultramarine's model not named as a character to be your Warlord. Uh, you can generate an additional Warlord trait from them from the Ultramarine's trait. Pretty, Pretty nice. Pretty standard. Yeah, so if yeah. you ever want to just keep counting a unit in uh, Tactical Doctrine, that might be a good way to do that. Yep. Uh, you have Squad Doctrines. Uh, start of the movement phase, select an ultra, Ultramarine's Infantry or Biker unit from your army. Then select either the Devastator, Tactical, or Assault Doctrine until the end of your movement phase. Oh, I'm sorry. Until the start of your next movement phase, you count as having that one for that unit. Yep. Really cool. Yes, it is. That's so really good, especially if you have a bunch of heavy weapons on a unit and you want them to keep doing that, you could use this one, like, every single turn. Yeah. It's pretty good. Pretty awesome. Honored Sergeant is the same as the White Scars one, where you can pick a sergeant and give them access to some of the special issue war gear, um, which is Hell Fury Bolts, uh, Digital Weapons, Mastercrafted Weapons, and Sunwrath Pistol. Yep. Just make yeah. the sergeant just a little bit better. Not bad. For 1 CP, not bad. No, not at all. And I like that you can give relics to some of the units as well. I, I like or like to unit champion. I think yeah, that's really cool. I do too. Especially for like smaller games where you may not have a bunch of characters. You've got tactical insight. Use a stratagem after generating your tactical objectives. Oh, okay. So this is one you can always switch to. Sorry. Oh, you can you can discard all of your tactical objectives and generate an additional yeah, it's one. Yeah, it's one of the ones from the. Yeah. From the uh, uh, Maelstrom of War. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. All right. And then finally, you have Honored by McCrag. And Honored by McCrag lets you buy a relic from the yeah, Ultramarines relic relics, which is great. Yeah. Well, for 1 CP. Well, yeah. And they can be from the Ultramarines relics, even if you yourself are not an Ultramarine. All right. Last thing we're going to talk about. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. There's, there's one more page next. Just kidding. All right. Uh, so we've got the Indominus Discipline. So the Indominus Discipline is uh, pretty cool. This is the Ultramarine-specific one. So now, Denny, I'm going to ask you the same question. Um, what do you think of this, per se? You know what, actually, I'm going to wait until you've read them all uh, this time. Because I know uh, when I asked you in the other video that we did, you, you'd, read, you'd read none of them, but said that I, read No, I've all. read, like, three of them, but I missed all of the three good ones. Yeah. So I was shocked when I saw how good some of them were. All right. I don't think this one is as good as the Storm Speaker Discipline. No, that, uh, one, that one was good. Go back and watch the other White Scar video. Oh, if you man. haven't watched it yet, guys. So good. Um, oof. Yeah. <laughs> uh, There's three hyper good powers in that yeah. discipline. All right. So, All right, so got? you got Precognition, Warp Charge Value 5 if manifested until the start of your next second phase. The Psyker has a 5-up invul and it's minus 1 to hit. Okay. Not bad for keeping your guy alive. Yep. Especially I would put this on Tigerius, because you're going to be taking three powers from this tree anyway, right. so it might be it's really freebie, nice yeah. to have that. Yeah. If you're not taking ones from the uh, Library's Discipline, of course. So you've got Scryer's Gaze. This one is really cool, actually. I, I, I know what this is. So, Warp Charge 7, if manifested, if your army is Battleforged, gain a command point. Yep. If you choose not to, then, once per turn, after resolving an attack made by a model with a uh, with an, uh, friendly Ultramarines unit, uh, within 18 inches of Psyker, you can reroll that to hit, to wound, or damage roll. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. Uh, then you have Telepathic Assault. Um, this one they Sounds, previewed, so gonna we're going to go over that I'm one. Pretty yep. sure they previewed that. Storm of the Emperor's Wrath, Warp Charge 6. If manifested, select the nearest enemy unit within 18 inches, invisible to the Psyker. Roll a d6 for each model in that unit. On a 6, they take one mortal wound. That's okay. If you're fighting against like a horde of orcs and they have 30 models in the unit, that could be really yeah. that could be really brutal. Useful. Yep. 
Psychic Shackles, Warp Charge 6. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 18 inches invisible to the Psyker until the start of your next Psychic Phase. Have the movement characteristic of models in that unit. Oh my god. And when a charge roll or advance roll is made for that unit, you subtract one from that roll. A unit cannot be affected by both this Psychic Power and uh, Tenebris Curse from at the same time. So that's from the Phobos one. Right. Dear Lord. That and that, being able to nuke two units, their movement... Thump, thump. Plus Thunderfire Cannon? Yep. Oh, oh God. Why? No! <laughs> uh, so you're going to take a Librarian to supplement those Repulsors, Dave? I'm going to take two Librarians to supplement. I don't know. I'm thinking, like, if you roll Scryer's Gaze and this, and you just try for each of them every single turn, that's going to be really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One Phobos, one... Yeah. Yeah. Get out of here. Hey, the Phobos is already painted. All right, then we have Empiric Channeling. Uh, Warp Charge 5, if manifested, select one of the friendly Ultramarines Librarian within 12 inches until the end of the Psychic Phase. When a Psychic Test is taken for that model, add 2 to the total. And the, and the model does not suffer perils on double 1s or double 6s. That's pretty solid. That's really cool. That's good for boosting your other Psychic oh, for yeah. that power you need. Like, if you need to get off Null, uh, null Zone. Yep. Dang. <laughs> okay, this is... De it's a decent All right, trait. hold on. Let me ask you now. So, compared to the ones that are in the basic Space Marine Codex, where does this one stack up? Higher or lower? Uh, maybe slightly higher. I don't think it's as good as White Scars, still. It's not as good as White Scars. I can tell you that, and I'm not even good at psychic stuff. <laughs> There's a reason I don't take now, Librarians. Now, are we talking about Librarius Discipline, or are we talking about the, uh, the, uh, Either or. Uh, uh, the ones that are in the Basics Codex. I think I, I feel like this one isn't as good as the ones that are in the basic codex. I think it's got some stuff, and it stacks very well. Now, you can take this on your Phobos Librarians if you desire, instead. So that might yeah, be a instead, solid option. Or you could take Malkador's Tomb on the Phobos Librarian tome. and take the... In, what? Tome. Tome. It's tome, right? Sorry, yes, Tome. Oh, okay. Malkador's Tome. Um, I don't want to lug that thing around. It's probably really heavy. It's a tomb. <laughs> Malkador's tomb. And then you get to cast like 15 Yeah, because he's got like, he's, he's a mastery powerful. level 80. Yeah. <laughs> so you take Malkador's tome and you take uh, you, this one down. Wait, well, I can't see it from upside down. Psychic Shackles yeah. on, on your Phobos Librarian along with um, the other one. Oh, sure. And then, then you blow both. Yeah, then you, well, then you have your buddy Empiric channeling you. Then you take some crap. you get regular powered armor, oh, dude. Oh yeah, and have him just boost he's you. Only, he's only got that one. He's only got empiric power. He's like the schlub librarian that you bring along to like. You ju you're just here to help me out, son. Like keep channeling over there. Keep he's, meditating. He's he's like I don't the little hear a salt robot you. from Rick and Morty. Yeah, but is totally. my purpose to buff my psychic powers? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, and then you got the tactical objectives, which is for uh, regular match play and stuff like that. Yep. And then you have this sheet right oh, here. Oh, the ultramarine name generator. Which is the ultramarine name generator, but it's really strange to me. Um, I I know you hey, guys. I know you guys can't see it. Right hold on, hold on. The, number one, uh, when you roll, it's it all just says Cato all the way down and Sicarius <laughs> all the way down on this side. It's really strange. I think it's a great funny joke by GW for uh, taking on that meme. So uh, yeah. Anyway, I like it. Yep. I mean, let's be honest. You're not buying the book for the name generator. All right? I, uh, I might. Well, I mean, you'll have to, because this book's leaving with me today. So. <laughs> All right. Well, um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, like our channel, subscribe. Uh, give us a comment if you thought we were garbage or you thought it was great. Uh, yeah. We appreciate any kind of feedback that we can get on these. We're desperate for attention. Yeah, that's actually probably like our clarion or our our, uh, our, ra our rallying cry, right? Is we want attention. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Good or bad, give yeah, it to us. Yeah, just give it to There's us. We no like it. There's no bad press. Well. <laughs> okay, there is. All right. Uh, um, but anyway, um, and if you, uh, if, you, if you also like us, uh, you can subscribe to our Patreon. If um, you want But to. if you want to, you don't have to. Yeah. Um, we do this just for fun. Yep, this is our this is our hobby, so we enjoy it. Uh, but uh, for Mob Rules, uh, I've been Danny. And I've been Dave. See you next time.